having a loving heart is loving yourself enough so that other people respond to that. They respect that. I'm not, we all talked about this. This isn't about, oh, I deserve the best because I'm me. No, it's about loving and respecting yourself enough that you teach people how to treat you. You get, does that make sense? We had a really long talk about how we deal with our pain and our medical issues and try and live as much a normal life as possible. And the people all around us that just don't get it. I know how you feel. Unless you suffer from constant chronic pain, it is impossible to understand no matter how hard they try. I know, right? I am not one who will go and sit in a corner and die quietly without making a fuss. You know why? Because if you do that, people just let you do that. Right? You have to fight. You have to rise to the occasion. Because if you don't do it, nobody else will. You have to be your own advocate. You're right. But the problem with this is, is we can't. We have, we lose, we waste so much friggin' energy just going to the bathroom, just having a shower. That, uh, like I told everybody before, I've had to make I've had to make a routine so that I, I start every day. Everybody knows the story. I start every day with a basket full of eggs of energy. And if there's anything big that needs to be done, it has to be done after I get up in the morning around 10 o'clock. It has to be done in that first couple of hours. Why? Because doing whatever it was, I have to count how many eggs of energy that took. And so I got up this morning and I saw the dishes in the sink and I wanted to make chicken and rice for supper. And I thought, okay, I can wash that pot. And the next thing you know, friggin', I'm washing the dishes that are in the sink. That used up three of my energy eggs. So my basket is now depleted by three and I have to budget the rest of the eggs to get me through to bedtime. Does that make sense? The well, the thing is, we get bogged down in the things we can no longer do. And we keep pushing ourselves to continue it, to fight to the things that we can no longer do. And all we're doing is hurting ourselves, right? So what you do is you step on a new square and you look at your life from a whole new perspective and you make a plan about where to go from here to make your life better. Because trust me, fibromyalgia, arthritis, and chronic pain, you may want to stay in bed all day in the cloud of pain relief, but it's not good to stay in bed all day, okay? I, even if it's just to get up, to go to the bathroom, and like I did, stand and, and do dishes. Now, there wasn't a lot of dishes and it only took me 15 minutes. But we now have to stop, go from the part of our brain that says, I've been doing this all my life, I should be able to do it now, to the side of your brain that says, I've been doing this all my life and it's no longer working. How can I do it differently to accomplish the same task that is more loving and gentle for me? I got done more today than I've done in a long time. But that's all that's going to happen now. But when the pelvic problems hit... And I was like, there was absolute, I'm sweating and crying and writhing in pain. Because when I make the old fart, this is what I told my brother, when we make the old fart noise, like, Ugh! that's not just an old fart noise. That's a pain. Okay, picture the pain as an iceberg. And we make the old fart noises. It's the iceberg breaking the surface of the water. And all anybody sees is the tip of the iceberg. They don't understand. They don't understand that that's just what's breaking the ice. They don't understand what we're dealing with underneath. But when the pelvic pain hit, okay, it's like I have the fibromyalgia, the arthritis pain. And then I had my ovaries removed and they refused to remove my 
out my uterus and now I have fibroid pain in my uterus and endometriosis in my pelvis. And now it's gotten to the point where I can do almost nothing except sit here and talk to y'all. Living with chronic pain is a, li is a life sentence. And our lives have to change. If you're living in a cell, if you're in jail for the rest of your life, you have to change your expectations of what your life is going to give you. Or what you're going to get out of life. Chronic pain is the, it, it's the iceberg below the surface. It's the jail cell that chronic pain sufferers live in. And the only way we can function with a smile is to step on another square and look at life in a new way and make life fit around how we function but we still have to function that's the number one rule get up and do it it's gonna hurt but but there's that tight wire balancing act between giving in and doing too much it's a tight wire it's a high line tight wire walking act it really is so driving from Quebec to Toronto, we had to do an Airbnb because I can't just drive, go to a wedding and drive six hours, come home. And I wanted to get there Friday night so we could stay overnight and, and be, I could be fresh for the wedding. But I stopped on the Indian reservation on the way down and got myself a chocolate bar and two packs of gummies. And I went to that wedding on two thirds of a chocolate bar and five gummies, four or five gummies. And with four king size joints in my tin. I'll tell you, I was in a lot of pain, but I didn't let that do me. You know what I mean? I was like, I was, I've had an epiphany. My life gets to start anew every day. Anybody, don't you, no matter how, if you're bedridden or you're anxiety ridden or whatever the case may be, let me tell you something that I found out today. Your life has value. It doesn't matter physically. It's not that your body has value. It's only a vessel. You have value. What makes you, you, is why you are here, right? It's that simple. So every single day, I can wake up and go, oh, God, I'm in pain. And some days I do. But I also say, thank you, God, when I stand up and begin another day under my own steam. Okay, I don't care that I can't dance the same as I did when I was younger. It's not about looking good on the dance floor. That's not what this was about for me this weekend. You know what it was about? It was about feeling good on the dance floor. Pain be damned. I looked like Groot in a pot at some points. I looked like an arthritic... A epileptic gorilla on acid at one point. But it didn't matter because I was there in the moment and living large. And it was awesome. And I'm going to want, I want to do that every day. I'm going to have to find something not just good in every day, but something to add to a goal. I got goals now, you see. One way or another, my life is going to go forward. Not necessarily in the same direction it always has because I'm older. I'm older <clears throat> and I have pain issues and stuff. So what if I go like this? Instead of going like this, I go, okay, let's just go like this and then go forward. It's not about standing still. It's not about walking a crooked path or a straight path. 
It's about always, always, always moving forward. Having a goal. Whether it is to stand up one day and do the dishes instead of asking your husband to, you know, unload the dishwasher. If that's your goal for the day, but have one. Pick one. Pick an attainable goal every day and have one for the future. Because that way you're keeping your eyes on the prize. Anyway, I got to go. Papa's about to be home from work. And I'm going to go dish up dinner. This is the Mrs. Wolfie saying, I love you guys. Take care. God bless.